Man, you know, um, I was sitting over there just during the worship, and uh, God was moving on my heart on, in a certain area. And I got to thinking, you know, I, I don't know what, what goes on in your lives throughout the whole week. And I don't know what, when you get here on Sunday morning, what's on your mind. And I know, I know for me, there's a lot of things that's on my mind, things that happen during the week, things that happen in life. Um, some of us were worried about a lot of different things. Um, and, and, and sometimes you come in and it's, it's like, why did we do that song? Or why did we um, do it that way? Or why are we doing prayer? Um, why are we, you know, and, and why are we do offering at this time? And all those things, I don't know, maybe those aren't, things aren't on your mind. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. And, and, and here, here's why I think we worship, uh, why we sing songs before we preach. And why we're praying right now before the, the Word of God is presented, is that it's really hard during the week to prepare our hearts for what God wants to say to us. Because you see, each one of us this morning came in here with a certain level of expectation in our life. And I don't know what your expectation was. You know, um, I came in with an expectation, man, I'm going to see people, and I'm going to preach, and, and, and hopefully God's going to move. And that was kind of my expectation. And maybe your expectation was, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to hear my favorite song, or I'm going to, uh, I'm going to come in, and we're going to do certain things a certain way. And, and, and uh, my expectation is to come in and receive a word from God, or my expectation is to, to come in and, and be blessed before I leave today. But I also understand this, and this is, the, this is where God was moving on my heart over there, is that our expectation, your expectation is, uh, is determined by your preparation. Because I want to tell you something, we can expect a lot of things to happen in our lives, but if we're not prepared for them to happen, you know, we're probably not going to see our expectations met. Because a lot of times our expectations end up being based upon things that are of the flesh, not of the Spirit. Y'all all right? I don't know why I'm saying this. this. is for somebody here today, and I don't know. But here's the thing. When expectation is matched with pres- preparation, we get transformation. And God, God spoke that over to me over there just a moment ago. That when we can, ha- we can expect God to do something. But if we don't prepare our hearts for him to do something, then we're not going to have the transformation that we all desire to have. And I believe every person in this room wants transformation. You want God to do something amazing in your life. I want God to do something amazing in this church. I want God to do something amazing in me. And what it's going to take, both expectation and preparation for that transformation to come. So here's what I want us to do. We've prayed, yes. We've sung, yes. But I really believe there may be somebody in here that you need to get something off of you. And you need to pray or you need somebody to pray for you. So that you can receive the transformation that God would have for you. This has nothing to do with what I'm preaching today. I want to be really clear. This is what I feel like the Holy Spirit is asking. We just sang while ago, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I believe he's here, and I believe he's speaking. If you need to be prayed for, I'm asking you out of a step of faith to please stand up and come forward. That's bold. You come here, you need somebody to pray for you. Will you do that? We got two coming. Anybody else? They need somebody to pray for them. Can I get some folks to come pray for them? Who else needs to be prayed for? God dealing with something in your heart? This is something called a holy visitation, ladies and gentlemen. God's moving. Can 
anyone else. Father, we just come to you now in the name of Jesus, and I thank you for this sweet couple that's come forward. God, I don't know what's going on completely in them, but God, I know that you have something that you're going to do in their life because they're preparing for it. And I pray, God, that you would work in their lives. Father, for this church, God, I pray right now, God, that you would move on our lives in a way that maybe many of us have never thought of. God, we ask you, Lord, to work in us, to draw us closer to you. God, we need your power. We need your presence. God, we need you to move in us. God, we pray over this time today as we gather uh, together and open up your word. We pray that you will speak to us and lead us. God, you're the one we want to follow. God, we know that you have a wonderful plan. God, we look forward to what you're going to do during this time. God, have your way in their lives, in our lives, and in those who you lead us to encounter. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I want to um, explain a little bit, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a different kind of message today, a little bit of a different kind of sermon today, um, and I want to share some things with you that's on my heart in regards to our church and, and um, who we are, who God has called us to be, and as we've been praying together and seeking the Lord. Um, last year, as we mentioned before, we began the series with the, we began the year with a series with the theme of We Are Mount Pisgah. And uh, today is the last day in that series for this year as we have been continuing talking about that. But I um, had a wonderful experience this week looking into the history of this wonderful church. And there are many of you who have been here a lot longer than I have, and many of you have been here a lot longer than many other people that are sitting in this building, and some of you may or may not know about everything about this church. But for me, it was such a wonderful time of just reading and, and seeing some things and understanding some things. So I want to share with you just before we begin today's message. And today we're talking about vision. Because vision is, is something we need um, in regard, for God to, to reveal to us as, we, as God moves us forward in what he's calling us to do in the days and years, the days and months and years to come. But um, I want to start by sharing this with you. If you don't know the history in this sense, I, I, I was reading this newspaper article that one of our own wrote. Dwayne Stevens wrote this article. He wrote this article in, nine, in September of 1972. And uh, the things that, that, that we discover in this is that uh, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church had its beginning in 1892. In 1892, a group of believers gathered together in a small house. The Reverend John Kane, the Reverend Eddie Cooper, the Reverend John Shaw, Mr. and Mrs. Tommy Haynes, Lindsley V. Williams, and others. And they met and they gave, they met for the purpose of starting a church here in Catoosa County to reach their friends, their families, their neighbors, their co workers. To, to see the gospel of Jesus Christ advanced in this area, to see the kingdom of God grow. And they gave the name Mount Pisgah to this fledgling church. They began in a home and later moved to a building that, 
Um, one of the buildings was struck by lightning and burned to the ground, and then they were given this land that we now are on, and they built a church that was here for many years, the little white church out here, until this building was built. They, in those early days, were the first to say, we are Mount Pisgah. And that's what they believed. They believed that God would do something great. I want to I wanna read a little bit of this, and I, I, I find it very interesting. Let me read a little bit of this article. And so you get a, a perspective on the vision that these men and women had. During those days, it says, Mount Pisgah has a name given to it by its people who have studied the Bible. That's a great place to start, to start a church. How many say amen to that? It takes its name, Pisgah, a place to view beauty. From the story of Moses' death, Pisgah was the mount from which he viewed the promised land before his passing away. If you you add Mount Pisgah, If you add Mount to Pisgah, you have this meaning, a place of height from which to view the surrounding beauty of a community that is trying to build up instead of destroy. Man, what a great line. I love reading that when I see that. Uh, And and here's what excites me about when I read that, and I'm going to read a couple more things out of the article, but it excites me. That in 1892, they had the foresight of naming a church, that is, the name of the church Mount Pisgah, because Mount Pisgah means to look ahead, to look, to see. It's about looking ahead into what? See, Moses stood on that mountain, and he looked at what was to come. And it's always been about looking down the road and what God might do and what God would do in future generations. We stand here today grateful for those men and women who looked ahead and saw you. And today, we gather together, and we envision we're going to have to look ahead to those who's going to come after us and what God might do here on this property, not just to reach Catoosa County, but beyond, and even further, the state of Georgia, the United States, and the world. At the time of the writing of this article, in 1972, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church was located uh, right here. The county took its name. It talks about how the county, I didn't know this, took its name from an old Indian chief. The first church was built about two miles from the present location on the, on the property owned by Mr. and Mrs. Tommy Haynes. This church was organized in 1892. Three years later, the church was struck by lightning and burned. Now, they, they move on, they come to here, and then, uh, I like this. This is, this is the grit that these people had. When they built their first church, uh, that, that building, this was a one-room building with homemade seats. I like that. The church sat off the public road about one-half mile or more with three settlement roads. These roads at times were almost impassable and were worked by only by neighbors. And the church was lighted by small old, old wall lamps and lanterns and was heated by a wood stove. Hey, what, hey, what would it look like if that was going on today here? <laughs> in 1913, the congregation decided to build a new church and appointed a building committee. You might recognize some of these names. E.E. E. Yarborough, N.T. Posey, C.R. Clark, J.B. Stevens, W.C. Williams, and Annie Latham. There's a lot of history here. It goes on and talks about the pastors who served here. And when this article was written, the present deacon board was Ralph Johnson, Vernon Teams, Murphy Thornton, C.R. Clark, C.W. Jones, E.L. Shaver, 
Dwayne Stevens, Tommy Roberts, Dale Shaver. We are Mount Pisgah. I don't know about you guys, but something about, when I read that, it moves me. It moves me because I'm here today because of these people. Who with blood, sweat, and tears and sacrifice that many of us don't know today stepped out in faith to reach the lost of this county. So, I'm going to ask you to join me again in saying something that we're going to begin, we're going to keep saying over and over again. And that's we are Mount Pisgah. Will you do that with me? One, two, three. We are Mount Pisgah. It's not just those who sit here who speak those words, but those who have gone before us spoke them as well. We are Mount Pisgah. Today I want to preach the message, We Are Mount Pisgah. And we're going to do it from a position of vision as we look at what God is doing and hopefully will do in the coming year and post hopefully coming, uh, coming uh, years to come. But if you would, if you've turned in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 4, if you would please stand in the honor of reading of God's Word. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. We've read these verses together before, but I believe they describe the body of Christ very well. It says, Until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure and the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all respects, all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ and whom from the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Let's pray together again. Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus asking you to take charge of this service. God, it is your plan and your will for this church, God, that we are concerned about. God, would you move in us? God, have your way during this time. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. May God bless the reading of his word. Today um, is going to be an unusual message like I, what I told you. It's going to be a little different than what we've normally done. Um, we, uh, we, I know in the last several weeks we have began with a video. And um, this week is going to be a little different. Um, we, we did videos the last few weeks interviewing people about specific things, and, and we, had a, um, we did another video for this week, but uh, we had a, a conversation between Josh Bennett and I as we sat down at a little table, and um, we began to talk about vision. And we realized that the length of that video was just too much for um, a service. It, it was very long, and we didn't want to show the entire video. We really felt like there were certain things. It was really hard to edit it. And uh, so uh, I want to share this with you that we're going to show clips of that this week uh, during the message. But the full video will be uploaded on Facebook for you to watch the entire thing. If you want to watch that later, um, you are welcome to do that. But uh, there will be a longer version. But each clip is going to introduce each point of the message. So... The very first one, and I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Um, the very first video is where, and, and I'm not sure if it, he explains it on there or not, where we discuss what does We Are Mount Pisgah mean. So if you would, uh, is, is it going to work or is it crashing? Please work.
Today we're going to be talking about vision. Uh, the message today actually is going to be catered to the idea of the vision of Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. And Josh Bennett's sitting here with me, and we're going to be talking about how how things are going to unfold over the next several years. At least how we hope they'll unfold yes, over yes. the next well, several well. years. And um, we've uh, uh, last year we began with this idea of we are Mount Pisgah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was going to ask you anyway, because um, I know what I think uh, Mount We Are Mount Pisgah means. But um, to someone who's been uh, at Mount Pisgah for a while, what when you hear that phrase, We Are Mount Pisgah, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, to me, it really comes back to one of the main uh, aspects of any church uh, should be its unity. And the unity of the people, of course, but also um, the unity between ministries uh, unity be of, of vision, uh, and and then of course uh, connecting with where we've come from and what we're trying to do, and and it's it's about uh, understanding identity so that we can have unity around something despite the things that are different about us, the different ministries, the different people, different histories that we have here, really having a core identity of who we are and knowing that so that we can be unified around that and God can work through that and we can have a a general sense together of where we're going, what we're trying to do and how to get there. Absolutely. We are Mount Pisgah, and 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 I really appreciate a couple uh, a couple of folks who put something together. Brandon Russell put the logo together, and and uh, I'm going to ask him again eventually to p- repost this what the logo means. But the the logo is pointed toward growth, and uh, it's green green because it represents growth. But when he, Josh is talking there about vision and about about we are Mount Pisgah, it is about us together. There's no me. It's no, I am Mount Pisgah. It is we are Mount Pisgah. That we are in this together. That it's all of us together. Acts 2.42 is, if you want to turn there, you can. Acts 2.42 is the early part of the church in the book of Acts. And, 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 and we know that you may know the history there of in, in Acts. You, you have the Holy Spirit has descended upon at Pentecost and, and, and the, upon the people, and, and God begins to move, and, and thousands of people come to faith in Jesus Christ, and God begins to move, and, and the church is given birth. The church, the church as we know it. Um, as given birth. In Acts 2.42, it says, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. I like this because it's plural. It wasn't one person doing something, but they were all doing these things. They were all coming together on a regular basis. And they weren't, at that time, they, they, sometimes they had, they went to the temple to because that was some habits that they had. But they were gathering from house to house because they were unified together in what around the words of Jesus and around the preaching of Peter in that day and how God was moving on them. The book of Acts tells about the birth of this church, and it gives an historical account. of. uh, If you read the book of Acts, and, and, and if you get a chance to just take time and lay out the book of Acts and begin to read it, you'll see an amazing story of how the, the history of the church unfolds during that day and, and the different people that God used to, to grow that church and, and to expand it far from Jerusalem but into the surrounding territories, just like what Jesus had told them in Acts 1-8, that you will be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth, and you see that church expand and grow. It's a book of remembrance. A book of remembrance because we are told of stories of people like Stephen and, and, and Paul and Peter and, and, and many others in the, in, in throughout the book of Acts. Timothy and, and, and so many other wonderful people that God used to grow that church. And just like the history of Mount Pisgah, there are people throughout the years who have impacted this place. There was growth in the early church. There was vision in the early church. There was sacrifice in the early church. And there was community in the early church. And man, when I read that, I read Mount Pisgah all through it. That's who we are here. The church in the book of Acts was marked by their devotion. 
It says here in Acts chapter 2, 42, it says that they were devoted. That word devoted, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, means to give yourself over. The implications of what took place in Acts 2, uh, the two, in Acts 2 church is compelling for us. In giving themselves over, they made their lives sacrificial. This devotion to the church, Christ, and biblical principles was not about them at all. It was all about the church. It was all about what God was doing. And I think about that even in the history of Mount Pisgah. When I read that newspaper article and I look through the different things that I was given to look through over the history, it was, no, it was never about one individual person. But it was about a collective body desiring to see God do something great right here. And man, that's who we are today. See, we've always been Mount Pisgah. We've never stopped being that. And God's moving here. God's working. They were devoted to the Scriptures. They held the Scriptures in high regard. I really loved when we were interviewing uh, Johnny and Thelma Capehart. And one of the first things that Thelma said was, I go here because it's a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. I want you to understand something. That's a great reason to come to a church. Amen? Is that we preach God's Word and we stay true to it. They were devoted to the Scriptures, it says here in Acts chapter 2. Also, they were devoted to the fellowship. And I like to point out that word fellowship, one of my favorite words in all Scripture is the Greek word koinonia, which means this, that they had a deep, intimate partnership in the mission of spreading the gospel. They wanted to see God move in a mighty way. Because of this devotion... This devotion to seeing more people come to know Jesus. They gave up their right for anything in regard to the church to be about them. It wasn't about them. It wasn't about what they liked and what they wanted. It was about reaching people at all costs. It was about going. It was about going to places that many of them didn't expect to go. If there was a, there's, a, there's a story in the, in, in the early part of the book of Acts where Paul, who was at that time Saul, was persecuting the church. And Stephen is stoned. And right after that, there's a little passage there. And Paul, Paul, Paul is persecuting the church heavily. And they said that the church scattered themselves. I want you to know something. I believe that that, 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 that right there was designed by God to happen. God allowed that persecution to happen because they would have stayed in their little comfortable bubble had God not made it difficult for them. And then the gospel began to go to the nations. And then we now have Paul going to different places around the known world, going into synagogues, preaching the gospel in places that didn't have synagogues. Why? Because, the, because things began to have the, the gospel and the churches had been going and being scattered all over the place. And God was moving in their lives. They were devoted to the breaking of bread. Has two meanings. One, they ate meals together. They were good Baptists. Amen? They ate meals together. Even an ordinary meal among the early believers would have something of a sacred connection to it. That it, it meant something for them to gather together and eat together. By the way, on behalf of our mission team this morning, thank you so much for participating in the breakfast this morning. It was an amazing breakfast as they're raising money to go do exactly what we're talking about here. Take the gospel to another nation. Amen? It had to do with eating meals together. It also had to do with communion. The taking the Lord's Supper together. It means to have, this word communion means to have in common. To participate and to have partnership with. Communion with other believers. And communion with Christ. They were also devoted to prayer. That's why we're praying more. We want to pray, be a praying church. The heart for prayer was in their devotion. Historians tell us that Christians began fasting, not on Tuesdays and Thursdays like the Jews, but on Wednesdays and Fridays, possibly concerning the betrayal and resurrection of Christ. They, have, they, um, they, they had a habit of betrayal, the betrayal and crucifixion of Christ. They had a habit of prayer. Historians told us that they kept the Sabbath, attended worship at the temple, and added the Sunday worship as a celebration of the resurrection. God was moving on them. We are Mount Pisgah. This, these words that we say 
I don't want them to just become some words that we mention every once in a while or a, a tagline on a letter that we send out. But we are Mount Pisgah puts focus on this word devotion. This word devotion that we find here, especially in the area of koinonia. A true biblical understanding of koinonia helps us stay focused on making much of Jesus and not making much of us. You see, it's really easy for me to make much of me. I want to tell you something. I like me. I like to get attention. How many in here like attention every now and then? Come on. You know, I like the pat on the back. I like to somebody say, good boy. But when we come together as a koinonia, when we come together in a partnership, what is important to you is important to me, and what's important to me is important to you. And we come together to unite, to take the gospel to the known world. We are in this together. Here's what this word, this word partner means this, that we are in this together, which means this, there are no lone rangers. There's nobody out there by themselves, and nobody ever should be. When we launch ministries, it should be a group effort. It should be something that we do together. We also, not only this, we are together, but we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to the church. We have a responsibility to one another. And we have a responsibility to Christ. That's what we are Mount Pisgah means. We, are, we get to share in the rewards. If we're together and it's we, we get to share in the rewards. We get to share in the rewards of student ministry, of children's ministry, of the building and the future buildings and ministries to come. I, I, I'm reminded of a day, and I know I've shared this with you before. I'm going to share it again. But I'm reminded of the day when I was a children's pastor. And I was jealous of the student ministry. I was jealous because the student ministry had a $40,000 a year budget and I had a $10,000 a year budget. I was jealous because every time the student ministry did something, the church recognized the student ministry. Every time the children's ministry did something, we got recognized because something didn't happen right. And it just seemed like it was like, it was something like that all the time. And, and, and I remember the student ministry, student ministry was going on a mission trip and everybody was pouring money into the student ministry. If I wanted, if I, and then I wanted to go to camp, take the children to camp. I couldn't get money raised to take the children to camp because the student ministry was more important. And I was jealous. And, 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 and that was when I was a children's pastor. I was all upset, and God began to speak to me. And I asked me, have you invested in the student ministry? Are you partnering with them? Hello. So I took away the jealousy and got out my checkbook, and I wrote a check to the student ministry. You know why? Because I got to partner with them and what they were doing so that when, when everybody celebrated, I got to celebrate too. Hello? And that, you know what I'm saying? We get to share in those rewards. You get to share in the rewards of what goes on. Uh, we get to share in the rewards of what goes on with our senior adult ministry. We get to share in the rewards of what goes on in our women's ministry and our men's ministry. We get to share in the rewards of what, listen, I'm excited. I cannot wait for those guys to get back from, um, from Uganda. Is it Uganda? Kenya. In Kenya. I can't wait for them to get back from Kenya. You know why? Because those three, listen, I want you to hear me. Because we are Mount Pisgah, three people didn't go to Kenya. 200 people went to Kenya. Y'all all right? We are Mount Pisgah here and on the mission field. That's what we are Mount Pisgah means. And those who started Mount Pisgah understood these things. Those who began this church understood these things. Those who built these buildings understood this, these things. And in a way, we are moving forward with the same dreams that they set forth in 1892. God is going to work here. I'm excited about what he has in store for us. Are you excited about what God has in store for you and Mount Pisgah? I hope so. We got another video we want to show you, another clip from our conversation, this one on vision. The 
vision, um, just by nature of the word, uh, is is about looking and seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what does uh, what does it look like? What what do you think that uh, that the Mount Pisgah vision looks like to you mm-hmm. um, at at this point? Yeah, um, obviously, with when you ever you have a group like this, a church. Uh, there are going to be different aspects of that. Different people are seeing different things, um, not only from the past, but also the future. Uh, they're looking at specific ministries, and they're looking at these types of things. And, Absolutely. And, of course, there are some things about that that are somewhat measurable. Um, you can always shoot for numbers, and you can shoot for uh, giving goals and, and different things of that nature, um, growth in, in whatever area. But there's also, um, I believe, there's, there's that vision for seeing um, number one, I'll go back to the unity part, seeing the church more unified around who we are. But then I think the future of what we really want, even though we're looking at, at, at uh, re- re- renovating the building right. and doing some things that need done to the building, ultimately I don't believe that that is the vision uh, in and of itself. Right, Absolutely. That serves the vision, and, and I believe Jesus called us to make disciples. Uh, to preach the gospel and make disciples. And I think that uh, that aspect of discipleship is extremely important, where we see people who don't just come to Christ and don't just get uh, comfortable. Yeah, I, I agree with you on the vision, especially with people. I think the vision is in the people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember uh, the, me telling the story about the, uh, the farmer in the barn. A farmer went out to his barn. Uh, he was working in his barn, and he heard these thuds going against the side of the barn. He didn't know what it was. And so he went outside, and he noticed that there was a guy out there, an archer, a guy with a bow and arrow, and firing arrows against the side of the barn. Mm-hmm. And um, and he, to his amazement, the, the, that guy had hit the bullseye of every single target that he hit. Yeah. And uh and he, the farmer was like, you know, what are you doing? What what happened? You know, how did how did you do that? You know, he says, I'll show you. And he walked around the other side of the barn, and he started firing arrows against the side of the barn again. And and uh, then he took a bucket of paint and he painted targets around each wherever he hit. And uh, and and that was and you know my my vision my view of vision is that that we look and see what is Mount Pisgah right now and what are we doing well and mm-hmm. and and accentuate that and, uh, follow that see where God is taking us in that and, and uh, we got some tremendous things happening here already uh, we've got a, a strong women's ministry and I see God using that ministry and our men's ministry is is developing really well and in different areas of our church our senior adults and their their activity and and, I, and I've always believed vision is not always just coming from the the leader mm-hmm. me right. but it comes from the people absolutely vision is a very powerful thing because vision it could I could be just me standing up here telling you this is what we're going to do but it's really us as a group as a church deciding together moving forward because we are Mount Pisgah and it's koinonia, it's partnership, it's all of those things. And it's incredibly important. In the Bible in verse in, in Proverbs 29, 18, there's this there's this verse that many people use to talk about vision. And it says this, it says, where there is no vision, the people uh, perish is the word in the King James, but in, in, in another word that's used here is it says this: where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. I want to read a quote to you about this verse and from a commentary, and I thought it was just very important when we talk about vision. It says vision is what we see, but it's also the way in which we see. Vision is the lens that interprets the events of our life, the way we view people and our concept of God. If we have a scratch on our, on our glasses, it may seem like everyone, every, everybody around us has scratches too. But the problem actually lies with us because our vision is impaired. Jesus said that our eyes are the windows of our heart. Paul prayed that the eyes of our heart would be enlightened. In other words, we perceive with our eyes, but we see with our hearts. When it's talking about here in, Pro, in Proverbs, when it says, without a vision, the people are unrestrained, the word vision there is the Hebrew word kazon, which means this, kazon, not calzon like Italian, but kazon. I don't want you thinking about food right now. 
Kazon. Uh, the word means a vision, a revelation, a beholding. Now, in the context of this passage, it's talking about a revelation. How many know what the revelation is? The revelation is God's Word. I want to tell you something. Without God's Word, you're going to perish. You all right? And without it, that's, that's where it all is. It's right here. Without the revelation, without the revelation of God's will, and it says this, that the people are unrestrained. They perish. They're with unrestrained. They have, it means this, they have no discipline or direction. They do whatever they want to do. The pulpit commentary says this about this verse. The prophets were the instructors of the people in divine things, standing, uh, standing witnesses of the truth and power of religion, teaching a higher than mere human morality. The fatal effect of the absence of such revelation of God's will is stated to be confusion, disorder, and rebellion. The people are uncontrolled and fall into grievous excesses. But he says this, he says those things that, that, that without a vision, the people cast on restraint. But then he says, happy is he who keeps the law. This word happy means to be blessed. The Hebrew word, root word here for this happy is this, to go on straight and to advance. So without a vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. Happy is he who focuses on what God has told them to do. And they go on straight. They move forward, and God moves on them. Without God's Word being revealed, vision for God's people, the people going on, the people, listen, go on doing whatever they want to do. But those who keep the law advance. They move forward. Here's what that looks like. And, and I, hope, uh, I hope I can give a visual of this, and I don't know if they'll be able to tell um, people watching online understand what I'm doing, but hopefully you will hear. But the Bible, the Bible, the Word of God, God's revelation gives us, this is the vision. It gives us direction in life. It tells us how we're supposed to function in life. It tells us how, what we're supposed to do. It is the story of God. It is the story of Jesus dying on the cross and the resurrection it's the story of your salvation. It's right here. It is the revelation. Listen, without this, you have no direction. Without the revelation, you wander around unrestrained, doing whatever you want to do. I want to tell you something. Is that not a picture of our culture? Wandering around, blindly, doing everything but what God designed them to do. So without a revelation, the people perish. They're unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. Happy is the one who receives the revelation. They advance. They move forward. They step forward in life. And God uses them. In a practical nature, we can say the same thing about vision in regards to an organization or the church. The principle of the purpose. You see, when you have a vision and you agree on that vision, then when you receive that, you're able to advance. And when we begin to unfold more and more about who Mount Pisgah is as we, as we talk about it over the months and years to come, then we together move forward together in agreement and God using us to advance the kingdom of God, all centered on God's Word. So vision. Vision is critically important. And I'm hoping that we will unfold some of that even today. So we have, another, we have one last video for you for the, our last point of the message. If you guys would go ahead and play that. Growing together and growing in Christ. Now that you've been here over a year and you are now integrated, I feel, and part of this family and, and, and you know us so much better and, and, and of course we know you. So what are the things that we're really doing well here and what are the targets that, uh, that we need to be shooting at? Where do we need to be going with this or aiming at? I think, uh, first of all, I mean, the one that was just overwhelmingly easy to spot 
was the value of relationships here, especially the longevity of relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when you sit down with people, they have stories, not just of people who used to be at Mount Pisgah, who've gone on to be with the Lord, but the stories even now with the people that are here now. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's uh, one of the main targets. That's probably the largest target that we have is sure. the relationships that we have mm-hmm. here. Uh, I think uh, ministry. I think people love to serve here. I think there's a lot of different areas of service. I think one of the things that, uh, that that's really interesting is that um, it, it's not one person, for example, like leading the women's ministry. You know, we have Angie Arnold. She's our leader. Mm-hmm. But she has a whole team of people yes. who have just dove in with her, and they're partnering well together. And if you look around all of our ministries, they're like that. There's a yes. strong partnership in each of the ministries. There's not a whole lot of people. As far as I can tell, I haven't seen it where anybody's out on their own on a silo kind of sure. doing their own thing but they're partnering together and they're achieving those uh, that that goal so that word together I think it's real important mm-hmm. um, uh, I've kind of been talking about that I, w- I would like to see us grow together and grow in Christ and yes. that growing together has to do with relationships Um, growing, getting closer Mm -hmm. together and getting to know each other, but it also has to do with growing together, that together we're going to, you know, the the church is going to grow, but we're going to grow in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I I see those targets, I see relationships, I see ministry, but I I also see uh, discipleship. Um, uh, I believe that there is um, a growing love for God's Word um, uh, as people are attending Sunday school, as people are participating in the Bible studies that we're doing, especially currently, we're doing those Bible studies on Sunday night and people are really getting yeah, involved been, there. Been really good. Um, and so we're starting to see that those kind of things unfold uh, as God shows us. Growing together and growing in Christ. See, I believe that's the call of the church. Even if it's even if it wasn't Mount Pisgah, that would be the design that God has for the church. That the church come together and, and grow together and also grow in Christ. In Matthew 28, 19, and 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I love that passage of, of Scripture as Jesus is giving that command as He's getting ready to depart. And He says this, He says, uh, uh, go baptize, He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. The word all nations, it means all people groups. And when I think of people groups, I think of what we already do here now and, and all nations. And, and that includes um, Uganda and, Ken, and Kenya and Nicaragua and Ecuador, and Guatemala, and different places that we haven't been, and and different places that we have been. But those people groups also include Catoosa County. As we reach our neighbors, our friends, and our co-workers, that to me is what it means to go into all nations. See, we desire to grow together in relationship, encouraging the church to build relationships and spend time together. We want to continue to do that. We desire to grow together numerically, there's always room for more people he, to be a part of our church family. You know, I, I have a, um, uh, here in, in our house right now, um, we got two boys, and uh, we're opening up our doors, uh, hopefully real soon, to foster children. And I want you to understand, there's always room in our family. We want to invite more people in. I believe that's the picture of the church. There's always room here for one more. And man, we want to keep inviting people. We want to keep encouraging people to be a part of our church and to be a part of our family here. We desire to grow together in Christ. We want to encourage one another to grow in our relationship with Christ through discipleship and public witness. I want to encourage you. That's why we talked about this month getting involved in Sunday school, getting involved in ministry, growing growing in Christ together. See, with our motto in mind, here's what I want to share with you. If you've read it, you may have read it on Facebook. I don't know. If, I don't think we sent an email out about it, but I posted this a while back. But I want to give you the 2020 vision goals for Mount Pisgah. This desire in my heart and to, to lay this out before you, and I'm hoping that we will partner together to make this happen. But the Mount, Mount Pisgah 2020 vision goals are this. One is to see Sunday school growth here at Mount Pisgah. My desire 
my heart is to see two new classes of 20 plus people attending Sunday school in those classes. That's going to take a lot of work and a lot of effort. The great thing is I've already got two people who volunteered to step up and lead Sunday school classes. So we've got the teachers, we just need the students. Which means there's people in here right now, you're not attending Sunday school. We want to encourage you to attend Sunday school. Maybe you're not comfortable going to one of the ones we already have established. You're going to have an opportunity to start a new one. And to be a part of something, that, giving birth to a new class. Secondly, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that God will send us 20 new church members. You know, and, and, and listen guys, that's so important. We want to add people to the body. You know, so I'm asking you to join me as we pray that God will send the people here, that's, that God wants to be here. Well, you know, we, listen, I always say this, we pray for mature believers, and we pray for lost people. We're praying God will send us mature believers to, to join up with us, and we pray that he'll send us lost people that we can lead to Jesus. Amen? Tw- the third thing is I'm praying for 20 baptisms this year, which means this, we're going to have to share the gospel. We're going to have to see people come to faith in Jesus. There's some of you right now that are sitting out here that you've given your life to Jesus, but you've not been baptized on the right side of salvation. And you need to get baptized. You need, you need to step into those waters and identify with Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. There's some of you that you know you need to do that. You need to step forward and do that. And we're going to have bapt- we're going to, my desire, my heart, and I'm hoping you receive this, is that. And then... 20% growth in worship attendance, which means we're going to have to be inviting people to church, your neighbors, your friends, that little waitress that you're going to go to that restaurant today, and you're going to tip her really well. You're going to invite her to church, and we want to encourage you to do that and love on people and let them know, hey, listen, there's no better place to be than Mount Pisgah. There's no better place. Do you believe that? Do you believe that there's no better place to be than Mount Pisgah? Amen. I do. Man, it was a joy walking in this morning. Man, where, where's Ann Pickens at? Where are you at? Man, we about had a charismatic fit in there in the FLC. Saw each other. We got to pray together. God was moving on that, wasn't he? Man, we got to eat together this morning. And you know God's moving on that. You guys came and supported missions. You met in your Sunday school classes. It's such a joy to see one another. Man, let's continue to invite people to be a part of that. Today, today we are writing the next chapter in the history of Mount Pisgah. Right now, today. Every day forward, you're writing a new chapter. What part will include your name? You see, I read the names of many people who were a part of what God did here over the years. What part will include your name? Will it be the renovations that are coming up? Will it be a membership? Will it be a ministry that you serve or maybe you even start? What part will it be you? I'm praying for you. Praying for me. That God will move on us in a very special way. Because we are Mount Pisgah. And God has called us to this day. Do you believe that? Say amen. We are Mount Pisgah. Say it with me. I love hearing you say it. We are Mount Pisgah. Let me pray for you. Father, we just come to you now in the name of Jesus. In just a moment where... Um, having this invitation God and and there are people here who aren't members and they need to join there are people here that are lost that need to be saved there are people here who need to discover something that you have for them God I pray that they will during this time God I pray that they will embrace what you're calling them to do and God I know that you're going to do it So God, I'm asking you, Lord, to move among us today and have your way in this invitation. If you're every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're here and you've never by faith trusted the Lord Jesus, I want to invite you to do that. Will you give your life to Christ? 
If you need to be a member of this church, would you come? Would you leave your seat and come during this time? We give you, we, we, we give you that time. Father, today, have your way. In Jesus' name. Tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. I cannot bear burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make of my troubles with me and me. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Thank y'all so much. If you'll just be seated just for a second, I want to go, uh, we, we moved the announcements to the end of the service today. I uh, just want to uh, you pay attention to sign-ups before you leave today. Johnny Hunt Men's Conference, that's this Friday and Saturday morning. Make sure you sign up so we can kind of know the number. That's on the back wall back there. We also have the Valentine's Banquet coming up. We want you to sign up for that. Um, next week, uh, we're asking you, you can start bringing uh, spring yard sale items next week for the uh, Uganda um, mission trips. We want to encourage you to go ahead. We'll be storing those over in FLC. We'll have a designated spot for that. So if you have some items you would like to donate, so next week, not this week, but next week, you can begin bringing those at that time. Don't forget about our small group studies tonight. want to encourage you to be a part of that. A couple other things in the bulletin. Just want you to pay attention. Choir practice today at 430. want you to be a part of that. But here's what I want to do. Listen, they did not sell everything for the uh, Uganda mission trip. And so, uh, uh, we have all this stuff right here, and uh, they're just going to take a donation for what you might want to take home. There's lots of great stuff here. And I, listen, and you're like, what in the world is he doing? There is spaghetti salad. I mean, who doesn't like spaghetti salad? Come get it. A yellow cake with chocolate icing. Hello, Mama. Uh, you know, come on. come. Uh, so we got some great stuff up here. We got brownies uh, and all kinds of things. I think... There's these jellies down here for $3. They have a price on those. So um, uh, uh, they're amazing. She says they're amazing. I didn't make them, but I taste tested them. She taste tested them. So they're amazing. So they're right here. So um, I'm going to step to the back here in just a minute, and, and Marshall's going to come pray us out. But um, uh, this is the last invitation you get today. I'm going to give one more altar call as I'm leaving. You get to come up here and choose something, leave some money behind for, for it, and, uh, and take it home and enjoy it. And you know that money, guess where it's going? It's going to take the gospel to another nation. Amen? Y'all like that? So I encourage you that. Now, one last thing I want to say before uh, I go. I need to brag on y'all. I need to brag on the church. Listen to me. Lottie Moon offering. Our goal was 15001 how about 16,020? Take the gospel, the gospel to the nations. We are Mount Pisgah. Would you pray for us? Would you stand with me and let's close in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the word that, that we've heard today. Lord, I pray that it's challenged our hearts, Lord. 
to reach, uh, reach others, to, to go out and tell them the story of you, Lord, the story of our salvation. Lord, I pray you'd be with us this afternoon, that you would help us to reach out to everyone we come in contact with, that you would help us to share that we are physically and they are welcome here. And we thank you for it. In your name we pray. Amen.